Glaucoma is tricky and insidious. Usually it can be controlled with eye drops, but sometimes it can be stubborn and aggressive. And in those cases, surgery may be needed. Before I cover the types of surgery, let's talk about why surgery may become necessary. The eye has fluid flowing through it naturally, but in glaucoma, sometimes the fluid is produced too quickly or doesn't drain out fast enough, and it builds up pressure in the eye, pushing back on the optic nerve, causing damage to it, and causing peripheral vision loss. The surgical options would include laser, where no incision is made, and then incision-based surgeries, which there are a few different options for, and we'll be covering a few of each of these today. The primary goal of glaucoma surgery is to reduce the eye's pressure, by improving the natural drainage system that the eye has or creating new routes for fluid to drain. There are a number of reasons to consider surgery. The biggest one would be that somebody's already using a bunch of glaucoma eye drops or they've had laser procedures done or they might even be taking an oral medication for their glaucoma and they're continuing to lose vision. One reason to do a laser procedure would be that maybe a patient wants to be less dependent on their eye drops or eye drops are causing issues. Like they're having trouble keeping up with their eye drop schedule or maybe they have side effects like dry eye or irritation from the drops and and perhaps a laser procedure could replace drops altogether or just reduce the number of drops that they are on. An incision-based surgery would usually be considered if somebody has failed on all previous treatments, which would be drops, combinations of drops, oral medications, and laser procedures. And finally, a reason to consider surgery would be if somebody is already having cataract surgery and they also have glaucoma, we can take advantage of the fact that there's a small incision being made during the cataract surgery and do a very quick procedure at the same time to hopefully lower the pressure with an implanted device. There are several different options for surgical treatment and depending on the type of glaucoma and the stage of the glaucoma and a few other factors, the doctor will determine what type of surgery they think is best. Most glaucoma surgeries are outpatient procedures, meaning you don't have to stay the night in the hospital. Usually they are between 20 and 40 minutes and the patient will either be awake or sedated or asleep, but of course the eye will be numbed. After the procedure, patients are usually monitored for a little bit to make sure there are no immediate complications, and then they're given discharge instructions to make sure they properly care for themselves to prevent any complications, and they're given follow-up appointments to monitor the eye's pressure and the healing process of the eye. Of course, all of these details may vary based on the type of glaucoma, any potential complications that occur, the patient's overall health, and the preferences of the provider. It's so important to remember that it doesn't end after the surgery. The patient needs to be responsible to care for themselves properly following the procedure, especially following any post-operative instructions given by their provider. That ensures that they don't reverse the work that has just been done on the eye or sometimes make vision loss even worse by creating complications. So it's very important to prevent infection and inflammation and any damage to the eye. So post-operative instructions usually include eye drops to control inflammation and infection, protective eyewear, limitations of activity, follow-up appointments, and monitoring for complications, which could include redness, severe pain, or vision loss. Without further ado, let's talk about the surgeries. The laser procedures I'll be covering today are ALT and SLT. Both of these procedures are done on the trabecular meshwork, which is the part of the eye that naturally drains the fluid, but they work in different ways. ALT is argon laser trabeculoplasty, and this laser is used to make larger openings in the trabecular meshwork to allow the fluid to drain out more. Selective laser trabeculoplasty, which is SLT, is just like the name sounds. It's a little bit more selective and it targets particular cells in the trabecular meshwork, and it actually aims to stimulate the tissue to function more effectively. So because the ALT procedure causes scarring, it cannot be repeated in the same area whereas SLT can be repeated, and both of them can lose their effectiveness over time. Choosing one over the other depends on various factors, including the type of glaucoma and the preference of the provider. So your provider should be discussing any benefits versus risks versus alternative treatments with you. Let's not forget a little shout out to laser peripheral iridotomy, used as an emergency treatment in acute angle closure glaucoma and as a prophylactic treatment to prevent it. You can learn more about that in my video here. Treating glaucoma is all about improving fluid flow, and that is the goal of a trabeculectomy. 
Fluid is created here in the ciliary body and it travels forward through the pupil and ends up between the iris and the cornea and that's where it builds up. In the trabeculectomy, an incision is made in the sclera, the white part of the eye, and it creates an alternate route for the fluid to escape. This is covered up by the conjunctiva, which is that clear, looser tissue that's on top of the hard white shell, the sclera. Underneath this clearer tissue, there's a reservoir that will allow the fluid to accumulate. So not everything is built up in this area inside of the eye. Now there's this extra space for fluid to hang out until it's absorbed by the body. This area is called a bleb and it has kind of a bubble blister-like appearance and that's perfectly normal to see in somebody who has had a trabeculectomy. But the eyelid usually hides most, if not all of it. There are a few different types of minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries or MIGs. And often these are done along with cataract surgery where there's already a small incision being made in the eye. So it's a good opportunity to do one of these very short procedures. The first type of MIGs takes advantage of the trabecular meshwork, which has kind of a larger webbed mesh and then a smaller webbed mesh, kind of like this strainer here. And in this procedure, it's kind of like you'd be inserting a straw through this mesh strainer. It just creates a larger opening in the drainage pathway that is already there. It's a stent inside of the eye. The second type of MIGS takes advantage of the other drainage route in glaucoma that's a little bit more complex, but basically it's another stent creating a larger space for fluid to pass through. In the third type of MIGS, the ciliary body, which is that area that produces the fluid, is ablated by a laser probe so that it therefore produces less fluid, meaning less pressure inside of the eye and less pushing back on the nerve and glaucomatous damage. In general, MIGs are a good intermediate solution in between eye drops and more invasive surgical treatments. Tube shunt surgery is usually reserved for when eye drops or laser procedures or a traditional trabeculectomy has not been able to control the glaucoma. It's similar in idea to a trabeculectomy, except instead of having a surgical opening in the sclera and that bleb as a reservoir, there is a tube that's implanted into the anterior chamber, allowing passage for fluid through that tube into an implanted reservoir. So kind of like the bleb is hidden by the eyelid, this implanted reservoir is usually hidden fairly well by the eyelid, and the tube is usually only visible with a microscope. I hope this general overview of glaucoma surgical procedures gave you an insight into what is out there. This is not an exhaustive list, and I'm sure in the future there will be other treatments available. And of course, it's always best to discuss with your specific provider what would be best for you based on your particular needs. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.